Cancer is not one disease, it's many. But each of them begins in the same way, with the uncontrolled growth of a single cell. It attacks the blood, the breasts, the lungs, and every other part of the body. No one is immune to cancer, neither young nor old, rich nor poor, frail nor strong. Cancer wants to live at the expense of your entire body and your entire being. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't care if you're a mother or a husband or a daughter or, you know, if you have four children. It doesn't care. It just cares about itself. This is a struggle of life and death, and we cannot win if we're afraid. But human beings have refused to surrender, have always struggled to understand it. Was it God's curse? Could you cut it out? Could you burn it? Could you poison it? Was it a virus? Did it come from the outside? Or did the enemy lie within us? In the ongoing struggle to conquer cancer, massive force has sometimes meant defeat. So this will be your last cycle. Tragic failure has led to remarkable success. <laughs> and final victory always seems just out of reach. The struggle has reflected every human strength and frailty, resilience and terror, candor and denial, arrogance and caring, You're doing good. blind allegiance and leaps of faith, hubris and hype and genuine hope. Cancer has been called many things, the king of terrors, a hidden assassin, and the emperor of all maladies. Cancer has taken on this uh, larger than life role in our culture, in our lives. It is the word that we relate to with simultaneous terror and some humility. It makes us resistance workers. It makes us uh, historians of that empire. It makes us people who grieve about what happens when this invades our lives. It makes us soldiers. But every year has brought a kind of clarity to our understanding of what goes wrong in a cancer cell and what can be targeted, can be prevented, can be treated. Every field in medicine 